Welcome to Better View. In this video, I am going to talk about ventricles of brain. Ventricles are communicating network of cavities filled with cerebrospinal fluid and located within the brain parenchyma. So first, let us talk about lateral ventricles. Lateral ventricles are two irregular elongated cavities situated within each cerebral hemisphere and remain separated from each other by a thin vertical partition called septum pellucidum. The roof of the lateral ventricle is formed by genu truncus and splenium of corpus callosum. The medial wall is formed by septum pellucidum that separates the left and right lateral ventricles and the flow is formed by caudate nucleus, thalamus, choroid plexus and hippocampus. The lateral ventricle has three horns, the first of which is called the anterior or frontal horn. The anterior or the frontal horn extends into the frontal lobe and connects the third ventricle via the foramen of Monroe. Then we have the posterior or the occipital horn that extends into the occipital lobe. And last is the inferior or the temporal Horn, which is the largest of three horns of lateral ventricle and it extends into the temporal lobe in lateral direction. So this figure that I have made is 2D but the temporal horn it will come like this forward in the lateral direction. Now let us talk about the trigone. So what is trigone? This thing right here. Okay, this triangle thing is called the trigone. So, trigone, also called the atrium of lateral ventricle, is the posterior confluence of the occipital and temporal horns. And the last part of the lateral ventricle is the body or the cella media, which is the central part of the lateral ventricle. Okay, so lateral ventricle has five parts, anterior or frontal horn, posterior or occipital horn, inferior or temporal horn, trigone or atrium, body or cella media. Okay. Now, as I said earlier, the lateral ventricle is connected with the third ventricle, which is right here. This is the third ventricle and these two ventricles are connected by a foramen called foramen of Monroe, which is also called as interventricular foramen because it connects two ventricles. So what is foramen of Monroe? Foramen of Monroe is a Y-shaped communication between the lateral ventricles of left and right side. Okay, so see, you have one lateral ventricle on the left side, one lateral ventricle on the right side, then we have the third ventricle and the fourth ventricle. So foramen of Monroe is a Y-shaped communication which connects the left and right lateral ventricles and the third ventricle. This is it for the lateral ventricle of the brain. Let's move to the third ventricle. So third ventricle is a slit-like cavity formed in the diencephalon between the two thalami in the midline between the left and right lateral ventricles and filled with cerebrospinal fluid. Okay, so it is a fissure-like space or a slit-like cavity situated in the midline between the thalami. So this right here is the thalamus and this space surrounding it is the third ventricle and as I've said earlier it is connected to the lateral ventricles via a y-shaped communication called the foramen of Monroe. So this thing is the opening of the foramen of Monroe and this tube-like structure right here is called cerebral aqueduct of sylvius. It connects the third ventricle to the fourth ventricle. Now the roof of the third ventricle is formed by tela choroida, choroidal fissure and the body of phonics. This is the tela choroida. This thing right here is the choroid plexus sorry and just below it is the tela choroida and above it we have the phonics. 
okay and these three structures form the roof of the third ventricle then the lateral uh, walls are formed by the thalami above and the hypothalamus below the anterior wall is formed by columns of fornix anterior commissure and lamina terminalis this thing right here is called the lamina terminalis and this dark structure is called the anterior commissure so the anterior wall is formed by columns of fornix anterior commissure and lamina terminalis the posterior wall is formed by habenular commissure pineal gland and posterior commissure so we have habenular commissure the pineal gland or the pineal body and the posterior commissure okay and the flow as you can see in this diagram it is formed by the optic chiasma so this thing is optic chiasma we have the infundibulum or the stalk of pituitary gland and we have tuber cinarium and the mammillary body okay so this thing right here is the mammillary body and these four structures optic chiasma infundibulum or the stalk of pituitary tuber cinarium and mammillary body form the flow of third ventricles since the foramen of monroe are on the lateral side or the edge the corner of the third ventricle itself forms a bulb in the form of an anterior recess called the bulb of third ventricle okay so this thing right here as you can see this forms an edge a projection you can call it the bulb of third ventricles now the cavity of the third ventricle is extend extended into four extensions called the recesses okay so we have two anterior and two posterior recesses so these extended structures if you can see these are called the recesses so we have two placed anteriorly two placed posteriorly so anteriorly we have supra optic recess which is located superior to the optic chiasma and inferior to the lamina terminalis okay so what i am talking about i am talking about this recess right here this is called the supra optic recess how you can remember it supra optic above the optic chiasma then the second one is infundibular recess this thing right here is the infundibular recess it is a small angular diverticulum at the flow of the third ventricle immediately above the pituitary stalk okay so this is the infundibulum and then it will lead to the pituitary gland now the posteriorly placed recesses are supra pineal recess so above the pineal gland and the second one is pineal recess that is a triangular recess which projects posteriorly from the third ventricle into the pineal gland okay so this one is supra pineal recess and this one which is projecting into the pineal gland see this right here is the pineal gland so the recess that is projecting into the pineal gland is called the pineal recess okay so what are the parts of third ventricle that we have discussed it has roof flow anterior wall posterior wall the lateral walls and the medial wall then we have four recesses two placed anteriorly two placed posteriorly supra optical infundibular supra pineal and pineal it has two communication with other ventricles the first one was foramen of monroe the second one is cerebral aqueduct of salvius now we can move on to the fourth ventricle fourth ventricle is a diamond shaped space which is continuous with the third ventricle anteriorly through the cerebral aqueduct of salvius and with the central or the ependymal canal of spinal cord through the obex so this opening right here is called the obex and it connects this fourth ventricle with the ependymal canal of spinal cord while this thing right here 
is the cerebral aqueductosal vase connecting the fourth ventricle with the third ventricle. The roof of the fourth ventricle is formed by superior and inferior medullary velum, cerebellum and wall of Vincennes. Now this big structure right here called cerebellum and it will form the roof of the fourth ventricle. The lateral walls are formed by the cerebellar peduncles which you can see on the ventral view of the brain. So we have pons, medulla and on the side you can see cerebral, cerebellar peduncles, very big and prominent structures on the ventral surface of the brain. And the flow of the fourth ventricle is formed by the dorsal surface of pons and medulla oblongata. So this is pons and this is medulla oblongata and their dorsal surfaces will form the flow of the fourth ventricle. Now if you can see this fourth ventricle has a peak and this peak is called festigium and we have already discussed obex it is the most caudal tip of the fourth ventricle that drains the cerebrospinal fluid into the central or ependymal canal of spinal cord now there are two openings remaining actually there are three so this is foramen of magendi and laterally you will see two foramens opening called the foramen of lushka so see, I have said foramen of Gandhi from M, remember, medially. And here, laterally, you will, uh, two foramens will come, one on each side, foramen of Lushka. Okay, so foramen of Gandhi is a single foramen and it communicates the fourth ventricle with the subarachnoid space and it's present on the middle of the caudal dorsal aspect of fourth ventricle. This is the fourth ventricle. This is the obex, then like this, just above the obex, we will see foramen of Magenti, while the foramen of Lushka are placed like this, laterally projecting. So they are paired structures which act as communication between the fourth ventricle and the subarachnoid space and is present laterally on the cortodorsal aspect of the fourth ventricle, and they are two in number. Okay, while foramen of Magenti is single. And it is very easy to remember them. Magendi, it has M, so it will be placed medially in the midline. Lushka, it has L, so they will be placed laterally. So this is it for the ventricles of brain. I hope you found this video useful. If so, hit the like button, leave a comment down below, share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.